Hey guys, welcome to today's lesson. Today we are now looking at graphing sums and products. First lesson today though, we'll be looking at sum and difference. Okay, and then your next session, we'll start to look at the products. Um, basically it's what it says. We're taking two different equations and we're plussing them together. Um, now before I show you how to do this, I can give you a very simple equation and say, please sketch y equals x squared plus x. That'd be a pretty straightforward question for you to do, okay? Because what you would most likely say is y equals, you might factorize the x out of um, x plus one. You might then say the intercepts are x equals zero and x equals negative one, okay? You plot that, the zero, the negative one, you probably sketch a parabola such as that, and most likely then you'd possibly find axis symmetry. Um, in this case, we you know x equals negative a half, Okay, and then sub n, etc., etc. Um, that's basically what you're doing, right? Now, this is one function, but to be honest, it's actually not. This is actually two separate functions being added together. Okay, you've actually got y equals x squared, you've actually got y equals x, and we're actually now summing these two things together. So it's quite valuable for us to actually have a look at these things to see how this actually works. Uh, and then once we have that, when we get really unfamiliar functions, we can actually learn how to do that graphically. Okay, and it's quite powerful. Um, I'm gonna show you very quickly, if we have something like y equals x squared, such as that, and we have y equals, let's say just x, such as that. Not much scale in there, of course. Okay. Um, now we know that that's probably going to be the coordinate of one and one. Okay. Um, so what, what's actually happening here? Well, certainly all you're really doing is figuring out what are my y values for each of these functions, and we're literally plusing them together. Now, sometimes interesting things might happen that might actually help us to do things in a little bit of a more simple way. For example, here we have zero and zero. Well, in this instance, when I add zero and zero together, what do I get? I get zero. Usually when you have coordinates um, that are the same place or their intersection, okay, um, it's just double that amount. Now in this instance, double zero is just gonna be zero, but if they were intersecting at one, they're both gonna be positive one unit above, which means one plus one is two. Or if they're both negative one, Negative one plus negative one is negative two. Basically doubles, okay? We'll set for the next example. Um, other things that might be of interest to us, of course, might be this point here, because that's another point of intersection, as I was just mentioning, okay? So they're both one, right? So one plus one makes two. That's actually gonna double in size. That's gonna go up there. Okay, so what are some other things that are kind of going on here? Um, well, we, what you might recognize is you know, might get a spot. And again, this is not a great example because I haven't used a good scale, a scale here. But here I've got a positive, let's say, value, and I've got a negative value. They're the same distance apart. And when you add a positive value and a negative value, let's say minus y plus y, add them together, what do we get? We get zero. Okay, and that actually is the point of negative one. And so what we start now start to get, we start to get a picture of what this graph actually looks like. Okay. Oops. Okay, what the graph looks like goes up there. Again, not well drawn, but you can start to see how this y equals x squared plus x was actually um, drawn from its original functions and then sum together. Now, basically these questions, there are lots of ways to do things. There are a couple of things that I would focus on, which we'll see in the next question. But a lot of the time, if you're not sure, just look at the y values for each of the functions. And if it's a sum, plus. If it's a subtraction, minus. If it's a multiplication, times. And then you literally plot the numbers, that plot the, uh, the, the values, the coordinates. Now, this is what we usually call ordinates because we're touching the, uh, the, the y values. The x values don't really change. Okay, it's the y values that we are modifying, um, and that's important to look at. So let's look at an example again. Uh, Ma'am's got all her notes put up separately for you, but she's drawn all over it in class. So hopefully I'll redo this for you so it makes a bit of sense. But certainly it would be a good idea to write some of these notes down, or you can copy down Ma'am's notes at the end of this. Okay, so what are some important things to notice? I mean, last lesson we, we kind of knew there were some, some features with the uh, reciprocal functions that we kind of look for. 
Are there any of those sort of things going on here? Yeah, there probably are. There are probably a couple of things that I might look for uh, to start off with. For example, um, I like to see where my points of intersection are. They're, they're quite important um, because we know that if we have the same value there, then it's literally going to be double the units if we're adding them together. Now, what this actually means, of course, if we're doing f of x plus g of x, this means we're doing 2x plus x squared minus 3. Now, you might say, is it possible, are we allowed just to rewrite that and then sketch it as a parabola? Now, if this was a question, yeah, you could do that, and there's no dramas in doing that whatsoever. You'd factorise that as x plus 3 um, and x minus what 1, Okay, and say x equals minus 3 and x equals positive 1. Pretty straightforward. No dramas with that. The problem's going to be, like you saw with reciprocal ones, we're going to give you f of x and g of x with no kind of equations and asking you to find s of x, let's say, which is a combined function. Um, so you're not going to have, to have that luxury of figuring out what that combined function is algebraically and then simply sketching it. So we need to know this by scratch. Okay, so... Um, I know this point here, of course, is 6. So double 6 is going to make it 12. So I'm going to put this point up here. I'm going to get rid of that. Likewise, the point on the other end, okay, that's down to, what, negative 2. So double negative 2 is negative 4. Okay, again, the reason for that is because when you're adding negative 2 plus negative 2, okay, we get negative 4. When we add that 6 plus 6, we get 12. It's simply plusing numbers together. That's all this is. Um, what is what's, so what's another thing? I look for the intersections, okay, because they're just double. I also look for the zeros, okay? Now, the red line has a zero, okay? The y equals 2x. So when I add the zero with the other line, the blue line, does the blue line move? Nothing, okay? Because in this case, zero plus, what is it, three? It's just going to equal three. So when you're adding and you've got a zero line, it's just going to be the y value because, of course, zero plus y is just going to equal y. So in this instance, I know that's going to be uh, a nice little uh, point there for me. What are some other things that I look for? Well, to be honest, I don't actually just look for normal points. But, I mean, look, if I can see something, I know this is going to be a parabola. So I'm going to see here, for example, that that's two units up and that's two units down. What's 2 plus negative 2? Well, that makes 0. So what's going to happen there? All of a sudden, we get a nice x-intercept line. Okay, I might look for somewhere else where that might occur. Um, here we go, 6 units that way. And we've got, uh, that's plus 6 units. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yep, minus 6. So straight away, I can see that that's also going to give a 0. And now what I can do, I can sketch that line and you can see that's going to be, give my parabola like I was seeing before. Um, it's just adding. It's not a hard thing. And as I said, if you're getting stuck, just choose a set of points and just add them together and get your new function. Usually you can see what's sort of happening. Now, there are a couple other things that are important. For example, one of the things I haven't mentioned is if you have a vertical asymptote, the vertical asymptote does not change. Okay, so for example... I have a vertical asymptote for this graph of y equals um, 6 on x plus 3. That won't move. It's going to stay put. So what are some things we're looking for again? Well, hopefully you might say, okay, we're plusing them together. So I'm going to look for the intercepts because I know it's going to be double. Okay, so let's do this in a different color. We're doing green. So we've got the first intercept at the coordinates 6 and what, 4. So double 4 is 8. So 5, 6, 7, 8. I'm going to put it up there. I'm going to, I'm going to move it. Okay, likewise, I've got one at 1, 2, negative 3. So double negative 3 is negative 6. I'm going to move it down there. Beautiful. So I can start to see, okay, some points that are moving. Now, what's my next set? I'm going to look at some zeros. Okay, I've got a zero for my red line, which means my blue line's not going to move anywhere because 0 plus negative 4, well, that's just still going to be negative 4. Um, I've got another zero line at positive 2. So, two, so 0 plus 6 is just going to be 6. So again, all of a sudden, I can start to get look, uh, an idea of what my graph is going to be looking like. Now, and you might look at that and say, yeah, I know what's going on. I can see what's happening here. Um, but certainly, if you are unsure, what you can start to look at, okay, is just using some other coordinates, okay? Using some other coordinates. So for example, let's look at the coordinate of 1. Okay, you can see it goes down by negative one and it goes up. 
like almost nine. So what's nine plus negative one? Well, that's negative eight. So there we go, we're gonna put a point there. And all of a sudden, this starts to make a bit of sense. I can start to see this kind of arc, that kind of arc kind of look at. If I'm not sure again, I can go negative a half. That goes down by what? Oh, nearly negative two. So I'm just gonna drop that other point, negative a half down by negative two, and we can start to see, it kind of looks like this graph, like that. And once you kind of get that idea, you're kind of going to reflect on the other side. So likewise, if I'm not 100% sure, um, let's look at negative one, for example. Okay, actually, no, that's, not, that's an intersection. That's not a good one. Let's look at negative five. Okay, we've got positive two units up. We've got, what's that? Negative seven units down. So what's negative seven plus two? Well, that's negative five, right? So I'm going to drop my point there. And all of a sudden, you can start to see my graph. How easy is that? It's not a hard thing, right? Where if you're not sure, just take your Y values and your other Y value and plus them together, your job's done. Plot a couple of coordinates, you'll start to see how it goes. So again, intersections are important. Um, the zeros will might help you, okay? If you can see the ones that are uh, exactly the same distance apart and you know they're gonna be zero and give you a nice x-intercept, great. Apart from that, just do the table of values kind of in your head, you know, just see where the two coordinates are and plus them together and get your number and then sketch your graph. It's, it's not that bad. Um, so ma'am has put a couple of notes here which are important for you. Um, sum of two functions, s of x, sum of x is so we plus them together. The x values will always stay the same. It's just the y values that you're plussing. Um, if one point is a zero, um, the sum is equals the other function. I gave you the example of zero plus y is just gonna be y. Um, if the y values are opposite, so negative y plus y, zero, okay, we get x-intercept. Um, a point of intersection, so they're both at positive two, Okay, it means you've got two plus two makes four. It's double that. Okay, so it says double the Y value. Vertical asymptotes stay the same. Horizontal asymptotes, uh, if one function trends to zero, the sum will tend to the other function. Um, and we'll have a look at that a little bit later on. Um, and I said, if you're not sure, I mean, man's put there, if you're unsure, F and, F and G of X go in opposite directions. Um, I say, if you're unsure, gents, just add your Y values together and plot some points. Okay, dot the dot. Um, okay, difference of functions, almost exactly the same. I'm not going to do huge amounts of this. Um, the one thing I am going to say, it is certainly important about order. Order absolutely matters. An example, what's one minus two? Negative one. What's two minus one? Positive one. They are different answers. It matters which one is starting. So for example, f of x minus g of x will be a different function from g of x minus f of x. And we'll probably see that shortly. Um, again, I'll see how I'm going with time. I don't want to go much over 20 minutes for this session. But like I said last time, gents, if you're not sure, if you're a little bit unsure about things, just find the y values of both functions and then subtract them. Not hard. Okay, um, don't overthink this stuff. Of course, yes, there are some little things that might help. For example, you know, if we go through, let's say a point of intersection, okay? In this instance, that's really significant, okay? Because let's say, for example, you know, we're starting here with our red line, okay? My f of x equals two or x, and I've got my x squared minus three is my g of x. So I'm starting with red. My red value is six, my blue value is six, and I'm subtracting them. What's six minus six? Zero. That's what's important because when you have difference of equations, your x, your in, your intercepts will be your x-intercept of your new function, okay? Because when you subtract the same number, you get zero. Likewise, if I look at this one down here, okay, that's a negative one. Um, so negative two, sorry. So negative two, minus minus two, well that makes minus two plus two, that still makes zero. So you can see where, again, some of these will be important and make it a little bit easier for you. Um, some other things that might help is zero points, okay? But remember, really important to know which one you're starting with. For example, if I look, I do it in green, at that zero point there on the right hand side, so what's that? Probably about 1.6, 1.7, okay, for my x value. Um, I'm starting with my red line. So if I look up here, I'm doing, what's that gonna be about three and a half minus nothing. Well, guess what? That's still gonna be three and a half. So 
in that instance, that's not going to move, right? Now, if I look at my other zero line here, okay, I'm going to go down, and my red line is going to be, what's that? What, negative three and a bit? Minus nothing is negative three and a bit. That doesn't change either. Okay, so at the moment, you can start to see how we're doing things. Um, again, there might be some other things that you can kind of find. I mean, look, I've got another zero line for my red line. Um, zero minus minus three. Well, what's zero minus minus three? Well, zero plus three equals three. One, two, three. And now you can start to see where my line's going nicely. Um, there is one thing I can see. You might not be able to see it. I don't know. I've got two units there, and I've got two units here. Okay, now I'm starting my red one. So what's two minus minus two? Well, that makes two plus two. That now makes four. And can you now start to see your function? It's a nice negative parabola. And if I actually do that algebraically, you're going to see that your, let's call it S of X, this or actually we'll call it d of x, your difference of x, equals 2x minus x squared minus 3, which equals negative x squared plus 2x plus 3. And now you can start to see how that all works out. Now, of course, if you had a question like that, you know, you would probably do it algebraically, get your new equation and then just sketch it. But a lot of these questions, you won't be given the actual equation. You'll just be given f of x with a function, y equals f of x, y equals g of x, and then sketch a new function. So you know, need to know the differences. Um, I'm not going to do too much more, gents, because, again, it's up to 16, 17 minutes. Um, so likewise, another subtraction one. Worst case scenario, guys, just find your y value, find your y value minus. In this instance, we're doing f of x, subtract your g of x. I'm going to look for my intersections because I know when I'm minusing those intersections, they're going to give me my x-intercepts, my zero points. So I've done that. Okay, that's my first thing I look for. Um, the next thing I look for, I'll probably get my zero lines. Remembering I'm starting with the red line. So zero minus minus four. That makes positive four. One, two, three, four. Put my line. Um, what else have I got? I've got another one here on my right hand side. So I've got my red line, which is six minus zero. Well, that's just six. I'm going to put that there. I've got, of course, some asymptotes. I'm going to put those there. Okay. Um, and we're going to start to see what happens here. What else have I got? Um, I've got a couple of points here, don't I? So let's see what else I'm going to do for this one. Um, okay. So again, if you're not really sure, let's start subtracting a couple of numbers. Um, so for example, let's go to four, right? And where my red line, we've got, that's about four and a half, and I'm minusing two off it. So four and a half minus two is about two and a half. There we go, we've got a line. Um, I might look at maybe 10, for example, and x equals 10. We've got now my red line, which is what that, that's gonna be about four and a half, and we're subtracting a bigger number. That's like eight. Okay, now we start to see some negative numbers coming through here. So when we look at 10, it's gonna be like down here somewhere. And what's gonna start happening, you can see that these numbers here in the red, they're really small. Like, I mean, there's not much of a change. It's still positive, but that blue line is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, it's like, I think, uh, Eddie Wu talks about a tug of war, right? Um, the red line is, you know, he's tugging really early, and you know, he, he's really positive, and this guy isn't. Um, but then all of a sudden, it starts to pan out, and this blue line is going to win a lot more, okay? And so we're subtracting a much bigger number from the red number, which goes means I'm going to have a real big negative number. So I start to get this little graph that looks like this. Okay, so like that. And then likewise, we're going to do exactly the same thing here as such there. Um, look, again, for the most part, gents, I know like it is a bit strange and it takes a little bit of time to get know it, uh, to know it. But the, for my liking, the, you know, the big difference with this is, you know, just 
have a look at the numbers, the y values, and if it's a plus, plus them. If it's a minus, minus them. For the next lesson, if it's a times, times them, plot them, get your answer. Look for things like x-intercepts or um, look for things like points of intersection. Um, Mem has put some notes down here again, like what she did for the subtraction, so the addition, sorry, for the subtraction. So have a look through that. Please write some notes down. Have a crack at your questions. I hope it kind of makes a little bit of sense. I know it's hard without having a math teacher there with you, but hopefully, okay, I know that you're uh, you're quite cluey to be able to do a lot on your own. Have a look at Eddie Woos. He's got some really nice lessons on this stuff. Take a bit of time and see how it goes. Hope you're having a good day, gents. I'll see you very shortly for some product.